Now look, in 2021, when I myself started learning to code for the first time, I had no idea what I was doing. I had all these doubts. I don't even have a computer science degree. How can I possibly compete? I'm not good at math. How could I possibly learn to code? And as we'll discuss later on in this video, all of these fears were pretty laughable in all honesty. And I'm not gonna lie, the only reason I really stuck to it is because at the time I was so desperate to find a career that I could actually like. I had tried banking. I did a very prestigious internship at a major bank in Helsinki in my home country and I absolutely hated it. But what else was I going to do? I devoted literally the past three years of my life into getting a job in banking, into building my CV, my cover letters, my experience. Everything was geared towards going into a career in finance. But I decided to throw it all away after I discovered covered coding. Coding just gave me this feeling that I was finally doing something exciting. I was finally solving problems that I was actually excited about solving, which gave me this feeling that if I fail at this, I literally don't know what I'm going to do in my life. So I forced myself to succeed so that I could actually get a job in this field so that I wouldn't have to go down this other path of finance, which I knew I hated so much. And if you don't have this fear to motivate you, you need something else to keep you going. And specifically that something else is a system of habits, a system of daily practices, a system of mindsets that if cultivated for a long enough period of time, it would be unreasonable for you to not be successful. Because all these false beliefs about needing to be smart, needing to know math, or all of this, none of this is true. I honestly believe that absolutely anyone can learn to code. And I really hope and I really believe that if you stick to the habits that I'm going to discuss in this video, you are going to be able to be one of them. So habit number one is to assume you can code anything and act accordingly. The more I have coded, the more I have realized that it's quite rarely the case that something is not technically possible to make with code. And the reason why you should always assume that whatever idea you had in your mind is possible is because let's say you assume the opposite. Let's say you assume something is not possible. What's going to happen, right? What's going to happen is that you're not even going to try because you assume that it's not possible. Whereas if you assume it's possible, it's just strange things start happening that you just find a way to get it done. And it's quite sad to see that in this day and age, most people just have so little belief in their own abilities to code something amazing that they don't even try. So if you just follow your instinct on this, there might be 10 projects that you're thinking of building. And in actuality, maybe one of them is not possible, right? But if you follow your instinct, you're probably going to assume that only, let's say four of them are possible and six are not possible. And this lack of belief leads you to not try to build these five projects that would actually be possible, but you don't try because you don't believe it's possible. So that's why it is always useful to assume that it's possible. So what I want you to do is every time you are thinking of giving up or every time you're thinking that, oh, I can't do this, so I'm just going to give up. I want you to imagine that I am holding your mom hostage <laughs> and the only way that they're going to be released is if you figure out how to build that project, if you figure out how to do that thing. If that were the case, you would probably find a way, right? <laughs> and I really wish that I had this ability to think like this much, much earlier and I just adopted the habit of just believing in myself, even when it's irrational, much, much earlier. And this also brings us to my second point, which is to try to fail. Every time when you're coding, as a habit, you should simply be trying to run your code as many times as you can and just to fail as many times as you possibly can. From observing other people, there seems to be this phenomenon that people are afraid of error codes. People are somehow afraid that their computer is going to explode or something if they code something wrong. Like, listen, your computer is not going to explode. You're not going to destroy your entire code base with a couple of error codes, unless you're coding in C. But why the hell would you want to code in C? There's even a quote about this. I can't remember the exact quote, like how it goes, but it's something along the lines of the fastest way to increase your pace of success is to increase your pace of failure. So to make this very practical, for example, right now I'm coding my first startup, which is like a budgeting application. And I need, for example, to figure out how to connect to banks via an API and a bunch of other things. I have no idea how to do any of this. And I still make the mistake of thinking like, okay, 
I don't know how to do this. So then I end up procrastinating and all of this. But the time when I actually started figuring out how to do this is when I just adopted a mindset like, right, I'm just gonna keep running the code. I'm just gonna copy some starter code from the documentation or whatever, go run it. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna figure it out. And through this very diligent trial and error process, I make progress. The reason I've been slacking off on my startup series, by the way, it basically takes a lot longer to actually even get started and to make any kind of meaningful progress in a bigger project like this. And the other reason is that I wanted to take some time to really figure out how I'm going to do the startup series. And I came to the conclusion that I don't think it really fits in with this channel because I wanted to do it in a more like raw kind of vlog kind of style. So I've actually released a second episode of my startup series, but I'm gonna have the series on my second channel. The second channel is called The Founder. From now on, my second channel, The Founder, is basically gonna be thematically very similar to this channel, except it's gonna be in a more raw kind of vlog kind of format, a sort of more personal kind of way, because I figured that not all of you who view this channel might be interested in that. So if you are, you can go on that channel. I welcome you to subscribe to that channel and follow my journey in there. And on this channel, these regular videos that you'll be watching so far will continue unchanged going forward. Habit number three is to think problem first. I'd say that the biggest reason why people take months and years, and I've even seen people say that they've been learning code for decades and still not made any progress, which, okay. The biggest reason why people take this long without any making any meaningful progress, because they're sort of approaching the process like in reverse, in like the wrong kind of order. Let me explain. I think for most people, if you just decide like, right, I'm gonna learn Python, that probably isn't enough motivation for you to actually properly learn rather than just learning and like feeling like you're learning without actually internalizing anything. But you really actually learn them is by approaching your learning with the problem first. You're first thinking about what is the problem that I actually want to solve with these skills? What is the actual project I wanna build? What is the app I wanna build? And then after that, figuring out what would I need to learn to solve this problem. Because when you're thinking about it in this kind of way, like strange things just sort of happen in your brain because you're so passionate about solving this project or this problem that you're thinking about. Like what happens when you go outside for a walk or in your coffee breaks, you're still thinking about these things and you feel like, well, I have to learn this link. What can I do to actually achieve this goal that I wanna achieve? So I want you to adopt the habit of thinking about learning in a completely reverse order than what you might be used to. While most courses and most teachers and most learning processes whatever think of learning as like theory first and then you use the theory to solve some problem what i want you to do is to first think about the problem and then think what would i need to learn to solve this problem and then you're going to be very very motivated to learn these things i guarantee you that if you're just following a course even if you're just following my course and you're just doing their dumb practice projects that you don't really care about yourself you are not going to remember anything at the end of it because you won't have had any motivation to actually properly internalize the things that you're going through or reading or watching or whatever. You should do those, absolutely. But then after that, and this is what I also em emphasize in my course, is that you should follow your curiosity and figure out, ideally in advance, what are the domains where you want to apply these skills? The next very useful habit, which I really wish I knew earlier because of how much unnecessary work it would have saved me, is to be lazy. Today I don't feel like doing anything. It's very useful to approach your coding endeavors and your coding learning with the idea of trying to do as little unnecessary work as possible. And instead sort of stand in the shoulders of giants and like use libraries, use Google, use code that other people have written to like sort of leverage your way to be able to achieve much, much more, much faster. Imagine if every time you wanted to send a get request using Python, you'd have to go out there and like manually figure out how to access the ports in your computer using your code and like write all this code to like do it. That would be pretty annoying, right? But luckily we have like libraries like requests where you can literally just in a couple of lines of code send a get request using Python code and better yeah even if you don't even know how to use this library you can literally just type on Google or even better on ChatGPT how to write a get request using Python and it's literally going to give this to you so that's the great thing about the programming and community we can use libraries and modules that are built by other people so that we don't have to solve the same problems that other people have already solved ourselves we can use this solutions use other people's code and then 
fast track our way to actually solving the problems that we are interested in. So yeah, I won't go too deep into all the situations where I've wasted time learning something that I don't actually need to know in the name of being thorough and the name of just trying to learn everything to be the best as I can be. The only thing that people at the end of the day will care about is does your program work or not? Does your app work or not? Does it do what it needs to do or not. You obviously don't just want to copy something from the internet without any understanding about what the code is doing. Always understand the code that you're writing, but don't go deeper than you really need to. So the fifth habit is to think of your learning in terms of how would I explain this to a friend? And this is massively powerful because it sort of ensures that you're actually learning what you're learning rather than just learning or like performing, as I like to say, where you're making progress in some tutorial or some course, well, when it actually comes time to use that information, you actually don't know what you're doing. By doing that, you are forcing yourself to like organize this information in your brain in a way that actually makes sense because in order to explain something, you need to have all the pieces together. You need to actually understand it. By having this YouTube channel, I've actually learned so much more myself. And even these topics that I teach, like my Python tutorials, for example, or when I'm explaining topics like this, in the process of filming, in the process of planning my video, I realized that actually I didn't understand this as much as I thought. And I'm not at all saying that you now need to go and start a coding YouTube channel as awesome as having one is. And I'm not even saying that you need to actually go and explain this to your mom. Your mom is probably not gonna care how Python modules work or how freaking computer logic gates work or whatever. All you really need to do is imagine yourself explaining it to someone. I found myself doing this a lot whenever I'm learning anything, just because if I'm interested enough in it, I end up thinking about it sort of later on when I'm at the gym or whatever. And I always tend to imagine myself explaining these things to my mom or my dad or someone else. And it's only later that I realized that this process of doing this in my brain actually helped me learn this and solidify this information. There's even some quote about this where if you can't explain something in a tweet, you don't properly understand it. And the same thing happened again as I was developing my Python course. I went into it thinking that, well, pff, this is gonna be easy. I know Python, I've been coding in it for so long. But actually while planning the course, I realized that actually some of the pieces I didn't actually understand as well as I thought I did. So I actually had to sit down and really like think about it. Here's how I would explain this to my mom because I've literally approached it in the way, like if my mom watched my course, they should hopefully be able to understand Python at the end of it. And yes, that is indeed a very not so subtle plug to my Python course. Again, if you're interested, you can check it out in the description on my SuperPeer account. And let me tell you, making these courses was so much more work than I thought it would be, but I'm, yeah, really happy the way it turned out. Really fulfilling as well, and like I said, also helped me learn. If you want to hear my full story of how I learned to code my entire process of how I learned to code in four months and got a job. I will leave the video where I go over this right here. It's the most successful video on this channel, more than 2.6 million views, I think. You guys have really, really loved it. So if you haven't seen it yet, I'm really confident that you will absolutely love it. So go watch it right there. And for my startup update video from my second channel, you can go check that out right here and subscribe to my second channel if you're interested in that kind of more vlog style and raw content over there. With that, I'll see you in the next video.